You know, we're really excited about this uh, Gambit series. It's uh, really a next generation for us moving on into, uh, you know, collaborative combat aircraft. Uh, currently with the uh, offboard sensing station that we're working on today and uh, the Skyborg autonomy efforts have been going on will position us well uh, into, the, into the future. You know, we're, we really think this um, Gambit brings with the success of what General Atomics has had, which is scaling, uh, you know, uh, platforms without redesigning every bit of it. When we talk about UAV production in the future, uh, there's an analogy that I like. You can buy a Zippo lighter that takes a lot of energy to make. You can buy a match. A match you use once, a Zippo you can use your entire life. Our goal at General Atomics is to make BIC lighters, something that has a limited life, that for its duration and the conflict that it's in provides extreme value, but after that's over, you're not sitting and maintaining something and mothballing a fleet. So the collaborative combat aircraft is an idea that our current fighters could have enhanced operational effectiveness through teaming with unmanned platforms. Uh, initially, you think of that in attributability and the loss of those aircraft, but as we look at advanced sensing techniques, uh, spreading aircraft out over a large force front gives you a un unique sensing perspective that allows you to look at adversary aircraft. One of the challenges with our current force structure is that there's a limited number of assets available. I equate that to a bald eagle philosophy. One of the biggest challenges is to bring mass to the fight and create more bumblebees. By using digital engineering, we're able to speed up the development cycle and allow us to bring different variants faster to the warfighter as, as the warfight changed. One of the features of the Gambit aircraft is its unique core that allows us to then pivot into different variants, which address the different mission spaces that our customers need. So the Gambit core is about 70% common between all the different variants. And what that allows us to do is it have enhanced affordability by bringing a higher rate to the core and then allowing that to diversify into different variants to address different missions. As part of our core, we have a landing gear, flight critical avionics, and a core airframe center structure. The variants then bring in the wings, the tails, and the different engines for the different missions uh, to address the specific mission needs. So our Gambit-1 aircraft is really focused around intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. It's adapted with its wings and tails to be long endurance, stay out in the battle space a long time, and also focuses on agile combat employment, where we base forward in the fight in lower aspects of the hostilities. Our Gambit-2 aircraft is more focused on the air-to-air -air engagement. It's more of a loyal wingman and works in and around our current fourth and fifth gen fighters. Our third variant takes that core technology and focuses on domestic operations for training and adversary air targets. And lastly, our Gambit 4 platform brings a flying wing, ultra long endurance capability that exceeds 60 hours for long range bracing with stand-in effects. And that's really what's behind the Gambit series. You can have commonality, you can have economy of scale, and then you can uh, outfit the aircraft with different sensors, different capability, but still have those common systems, those common comms, everything else that, you know, that makes this, gives you the economy of scale going forward. Very important. And that's, that scaling capability is really what you need if you're gonna talk large numbers. So you can take this, um, you know, this disaggregated set of, of uh, aircraft and, and see how you survive against it. So it's really a good way to develop both sides of the equation. And so that's really important, I think, going forward. That training and uh, that learning from training and iterating, uh, I think will make the system uh, the best it can be. Like I say, if we have a disaggregated set, you know, some aircraft can be sensing and other aircraft could be doing the mission of shooting. And the confusion that would create for the enemy, I think is huge. So um, yeah, and maybe from the outside looking in, you, you really can't tell what, air, what aircraft has what mission. So I think that's really powerful to have a mixed fleet in your disaggregated set of autonomy going. And then we can provide that asymmetric advantage against a more sophisticated threat. Yeah, so on the journey of air launched effects, we've realized that the idea of these very tight swarms, these high mass, these thousands of things, don't make a lot of sense because the capability when you make a very small thing is very low. And so we've spent a lot of time working on the tipping point between the very small, the bumblebee, the, the little expendable, and the MQ-9. And what we've realized is that there's a sweet spot in the air launched effects portfolio with things like Eaglet, 200 pound capability, long shot in the 2000 pound capability, that that's the right blend 
of mission capability to amount of mass in the fight. It creates a hard targeting problem, but still at the right cost exchange value. The, the swarms that we used to talk about three years ago don't really make a lot of sense, and that's why you don't see them being talked about in, in the current trade space as aggressively as long shots, as eaglets, as sparrow hawks, as those types of things. So being at General Atomics over two decades, I've had a great pleasure to watch our product line grow and mature from the Predator A all the way up to our world-class Sky Guardian project. But I'm looking towards the future. I'm trying to figure out what's in the next 20 years. And I'm very excited with what Gambit 4 brings. It brings the best of every UAV that came before it. Long endurance, 60 hours. A price point that's at and around the, the capability of MQ-9 Reaper. And lastly, airspace access at the things that you hear about in the, in the story tales that we tell of, on how the wars are fought. We see that 30-year heritage that General Atomics has brought through Predator growing and adapting into the Gambit ideology. And we're very excited over the next coming years to bring that product to the flight line and show it to the, the public.